It's been the most anticipated show on Netflix in years, and the first volume dropped to hundreds of millions of streaming hours and amazing reviews. Stranger Things is the show of the moment again, but fans are more than a little disappointed with the latest preview of the finale ahead of its July release. What exactly got everyone down? Keep watching to find out. First up, where did we leave the gang? Stranger Things took an almost three-year break before dropping its latest season, and in an effort to keep fans waiting even even longer, the season was split into two volumes. The first seven episodes dropped in May of 2022, and the four-hour-long finale will follow in July, split into two episodes. Season three ended with a battle in Starcourt Mall. Billy died, and Eleven lost her powers and moved to California with Joyce, Will, and Jonathan. Clearly, they couldn't take much more of Hawkins and the constant goings-on, and we don't blame them. The first volume of season four finds the buyers and Eleven in California. Eleven isn't having the best time at school, and she fights back against a bully. This causes the government to show up and take her to a secret facility where she meets, surprise, surprise, Dr. Brenner, who tries to restore her powers. Over in Hawkins, the OG gang and newcomer Eddie are trying to track down the Upside Down's latest offering, Vecna. This extra special villain preys on his victims' minds and eventually kills them by snapping their limbs. Vecna almost gets Max before she's saved by the glorious Kate Bush, who also sent the song Running Up That Hill to the top of the charts. The older kids end up in the Upside Down through a portal that Vecna opened. Hopper is still very much alive, stuck in a Russian labor camp. Joyce and Murray take a trip to snowy Siberia to save him, but end up imprisoned with him and Dimitri. There's also talk of a cage fight with a Demogorgon, so season four has been nothing if not exciting so far. In the mid-season finale, Robin and Eddie make it out of the Upside Down, and as Nancy follows follows them, Vecna grabs a hold of her mind too. Eleven is encouraged to escape by an attendant at Dr. Brenner's facility, and she accidentally restores his hidden powers in the process. That massacre at Hawkins' lab? Yup, not Eleven. It was all thanks to this shady attendant, aka Number One. In a hair-raising twist, Number One also turns out to be Vecna. Vecna used to be the son of Victor Creel, the man in the asylum. The evil force that killed his wife and kid in the 50s was actually his son though Victor was blamed for the murders, and his son was thought to be dead. Why did people think that? It's because a doctor kindly took him in and tattooed number one onto him, and it was none other than Dr. Brenner. Eleven gets her powers and her iconic buzz cut back too. This might be the most we get. It's clear that part one set up plenty of drama and left a lot of loose ends that we need part two to tie up. The four hours promised to end season four have a lot of work to do, but fans aren't impressed with the promo pictures were seeing. As we mentioned in the recap, part one was action-packed and more terrifying than ever. The main gang's futures are hanging in the balance, and this new villain is a more dangerous one than ever before, so it makes sense that any promo content should capture that same edge-of-your-seat energy, and fans pumped up for the finale, though it's not like they need it. The pictures don't show much of the action we're expecting. Instead, there are stills of the characters sitting around for the most part, in a car, on a couch, all kinds of sitting. The pictures don't give off the vibe we're craving for part two, and they've got fans worried that the finale may not be as high-powered as expected. Of course, this may just be a ploy to not give away the action, and we know the Duffers better than that. They'd never disappoint us, would they? However, the little preview we got of part two makes up for a lot. Things are not looking good for anyone in the sneak peek, as Robin seems to be trapped in the Upside Down even though she escaped, and we don't know for sure if Eleven got her power back or not. With the chilling footage and Robin saying things might not work out this time, it's reasonable to expect a tough battle for Hawkins in the upcoming episodes. And of course, the whole thing was set to running up that hill. But it's not all bad news. No matter what the pictures say, the Duffer Brothers and Netflix have us excited anyway. The creators are slowly dropping details about the finale, and it's going to be a wild ride. Matt Duffer actually said that the finale of Season 4 has more FX shots than all of Season 3. To put that into context, Season 3 had the Mind Flayer, characters melting to become one with it, and of course, the huge battle at the mall. According to Matt's brother Ross, there's about an hour of straight action in the finale that pushes the boundaries of any sequence in TV history. They went on to say it's all tension and dread, and the most complicated thing they've ever tried to do. Those are big words for a pair that made all of Stranger Things, and we can't wait to see just what they mean. It's all 
also hinted that the gang will definitely come up with a plan to overcome Vecna, but there's no guarantee that it'll work. Now, in other related news, the Duffers have regrets. The Duffer brothers may have created the storyline for all of Stranger Things years ago when they pitched it to Netflix, but that doesn't mean they think every decision they made was the right one. In the first episode of season four, we were introduced to Chrissy Cunningham, a popular high school student who's dealing with creepy visions and psychological distress. To help her deal with this, she attends counseling sessions at school, but also tries to buy drugs off Eddie Munson, the leader of the Hellfire Club. Soon enough, Vecna possesses her and kills her in a pretty rough way. The Duffers have since admitted that they regret killing her off, and they should have let her story progress. Since they filmed the drug deal scene pretty late into the shooting schedule, Chrissy had already been killed off according to the plot, and they couldn't reverse it. The show has typically been pretty good about not killing off its main cast. Apart from fan favorites like Bob dying over the past seasons, the core gang is still alive, despite everything they've had to go through. Even Hopper's death was fake, and so fans are curious to know if they'll actually kill off a main cast member soon. As it's confirmed that there's only one more season to end the show after season 4 ends, it makes sense to expect one of the gang to finally kick the bucket. At this point, Nancy seems to be in the toughest position, trapped in the upside down with her consciousness in Vecna's hands. Next, Kate Bush is just like us. It's no secret that Kate Bush's song, Running Up That Hill, has shattered records since that scene with Max in part one of the season. The artist is typically private about her life, but after the recent success of her 1985 single, she gave a rare interview and spoke about her thoughts on the show and its usage of her song. I mean, when your song is topping the charts 37 years after it dropped, it makes sense that you'd want to talk to the fans about it. Bush talked about how it feels to reach a completely new, much younger audience that may never have heard her music before. The 63-year-old sensation said that she's definitely a fan of the show. She loves how positively and meaningfully the song was used in the fourth episode of the season. She obviously never expected it, and she thinks it's very special that a whole new generation gets to experience her music. Either way, fans are grateful. The song is amazing, and the scene resonated with a lot of people. Lastly, the tech that gave us a little 11. In this season, we saw a lot of flashback sequences, specifically from 1979, which was before the events of the first season. We see Eleven and her time being held captive by Dr. Brenner, and most of it is seen through Eleven's memories. However, in certain places, the actress playing Eleven isn't actually Millie Bobby Brown. Marty Blair, a young actor, stood in for the much younger version of Eleven, and the two worked together for hours to create a realistic portrayal of the character. In post-production, the team edited Millie's face onto Marty's body so Eleven could see herself in her reflection. Millie revealed in an interview that she went to LA where a process called the Lola machine was used. This involved Millie acting out all of Marty's lines so the team could replicate it onto the younger actress's body. Millie also helped Marty through playing some of Eleven's heavier scenes, calming her down when she was nervous. That's a wrap for this video. Want more behind the scenes news on your favorite shows? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.